1965, Chelyabinsk, Soviet Union. Irina Pokrovskaya, an accountant, came to pick up her daughter at the kindergarten after work. But the little girl, as usual, did not run to her with a cry of, Mommy, Mamachka, Mamulia. She was not in the group. Where is Galochka? This question caught the kindergarten teacher by surprise. Gali was not among the children. Apparently, the girl had already been taken away. Irina's heart began to prick with anxiety. Galia could not be taken away by anyone but her. There was a chance that it was the husband, but very small. He was always working late at night. The woman rushed home, and half an hour later returned to the kindergarten already with a policeman. This time the mother was in tears, her daughter was not at home. Where is Galia, her three-year-old little girl? Just in case the teachers went to check the territory. It is unlikely, but if the girl is somewhere forgotten. Check the fence. Maybe the kid climbed the fence. But it's impossible, there are no loopholes, the central gate is on a special latch, can't reach, can't reach. What happened? Maybe Galia is at someone's acquaintance or friends at the kindergarten. But everything turned out to be much more tragic. That evening, the resident of the house number 47 on Friedrich Engel Street went to the basement for potatoes for dinner. Here he opened the heavy door, here he entered, here he strained his eyes to orient himself faster in the dark room. He was just about to take a step and froze with alarm. He was not alone in the basement. There was a little girl lying on the floor. The man rushed to the little girl. What is it? Her arms were as limp as a rag doll. And why is she so cold? She could catch cold. And then the man began to realize what could be the reason for the girl's condition. Is she dead? Very quickly he ran home and called the paramedics. They didn't have to wait long. The doctor, with his cap pulled over his eyes, hastily jumped out of the car and hurried toward the basement. The doctor rushed to check the girl's pulse. His eyes widened, he turned pale. The child's heart was not beating. The shocking news spread throughout the yard. By the time the police arrived, people had gathered at the entrance to the cellar. How could a little girl be here? The door is unlocked, but the hinges are rusty. Even an adult can hardly open it. A chocolate candy was found where the little girl was lying. One side was bitten off, and inside where the filling should be, it was empty. The policeman carefully sniffed it. The candy has a pungent odor. A garlic and straw flavor, unusual for candy. But they don't make candy like this in the Soviet Union. It smelled like something terrible. Death. The unknown little girl was Galia Pokrovskaya, missing from the kindergarten. The joy of her parents, the only child in the family. Sobbing in her apartment, she told the police how they lived. In this crib Galia slept, and this Mishka never let go of her hands. And now mom put Mishka in Galaka's place. Just yesterday a daughter who will never come home again slept here. This situation shocked most of the townspeople. Who lured the child into the basement and gave him a poison candy? One of the first police decided to question Gala's tutor, Elena Solodovnikova. She was the last person to see the child. And suddenly it turned out that she had disappeared. At the end of the working day, just an hour before the search for the tick, the teacher told her colleagues that she was flying to Leningrad. And left. Chelyabinsk detectives immediately sent their colleagues from Leningrad a photo of the girl with a request to urgently search for this citizen. That evening one of the waiters, a police informer, called the Criminal Investigation Department. He reported that the wanted girl is in the restaurant where he works. She is not sitting at the table alone, but a respectable-looking man is with her. 
the operatives immediately went to the restaurant. When the policemen approached the couple's table, they heard a fragment of conversation. Elena complained to her companion. I don't want to go back. Please, can I still stay with you? But her companion shook his head. Go home. What is she so afraid of? The operatives decided to invite the woman to testify. They were distracted for a second, and when they turned around, Solodnikova was gone. She had run away. And in Chelyabinsk, work was in full swing. Detectives questioned all parents who that day took their children from the daycare center. Suddenly they noticed who Galochka Pokrovskaya left with. But, as luck would have it, no one remembered anything. But rumors of a tragedy with a child thanks to frightened parents instantly spread throughout the city. Rumors began to spread. That year in Chelyabinsk there was a creepy children's horror story. Frightened adults told their spoiled children, here will come for you evil uncle with candy, you will know how to disobey your elders. However, this frightened the adults more than the children. Who is this evil uncle? Meanwhile, in Leningrad, the operatives realized that they had missed the main witness. Or a suspect. They ran out into the street and came across a woman who was crying bitterly right in the middle of the street. Gotcha. My tears have nothing to do with the missing child, she told the police. My personal life is falling apart. On the day of Galina's disappearance, Elena was running around with two groups of children at once and did not keep track of the little girl. The teacher told the detectives that a woman came for Galia. And they gave her the girl, because this woman knew Galia and calmly went to her. According to Elena, the unknown woman was dressed in a black coat. Solodovnikova did not remember her face. Was the life of an innocent child taken away by a woman? The detectives went to the parents of the dead girl. And hear another surprise. Hearing that her daughter was taken away by some woman, Irina Pokrovskaya exclaimed. Don't tell me that she was wearing a black coat. Irina sobbed incessantly, but it was necessary to pull herself together, otherwise the daughter cannot save. The detectives heard an unusual story. In the Soviet years, for prophylaxis, everyone drank Debazol. They gave it to children in schools. This drug was invented in the Soviet Union and began to be used in neurological clinics, where the drug was particularly effective in restoring body functions in children who survived poliomyelitis and to treat such a disease as facial neuritis. In addition to its positive effect on the nervous system, Debazol helped to strengthen the bodice immune system. In the Pokrovsky family this powder appeared under very strange circumstances. One day they received a call at the door from a woman in a black coat. Her face was hidden by a gauze mask. She introduced herself as a children's doctor from the polyclinic. She said that there was a flu epidemic in the city and handed Irina three powders. This is for the child for prophylaxis. Running to the door Galia Stranger stroked her head and handed her a caramel, then hurried away. Irina and her husband forgot to give the powder to their daughter. And the next day Irina talked to a neighbor and was surprised to learn. No one brought any medicine to the neighbor's children. With trembling hands Irina ran to call the clinic. On the phone she was told that there had been no order, none of the doctors and medical staff had brought the alleged medicinal powders to the apartments. The couple decided to go to the laboratory and find out what kind of powder had been brought home. The laboratory, where Irina gave the powder for testing, answered unequivocally. No poison was found, it is banal debazol. But why did the stranger brought the medicine? Detectives assumed, wanted to look at the child and see if she would take candy from someone else's aunt. Maybe she hates all kids. What if she's looking for another little victim? That same evening, the event that Soviet investigators had so feared took place. A call came into the police station. 
In a trembling voice, a man reported that he had noticed a woman in a black coat in one of the city's courtyards. It was a police officer named Sukhov. He said that he would have passed by, but was very frightened when he saw what she was holding. Chocolate candy. That's what she was holding. Who would think of handing them out for nothing right now? The strange woman offered candy to all the children. But no one took it. All the dads and moms in Chelyabinsk then, frightened by the terrible situation with Galia strictly forbade to take from strangers any food, especially sweets. And yet, in front of the policeman one of the boys reached out to the box of candy and took one. There was no way another child's death could be allowed. The man ran to the boy, who was frightened and ran away too, but in the other direction. Nevertheless, he threw the candy into his pocket. What to do? The boy disappeared into a narrow hole in the fence. Sukhov decided to play a trick. He shouted to the boy that he had a secret mission for him from the Soviet militia. The boy believed him and came out to Sukhov. Not thinking long, the policeman grabbed the child and quickly took him to the hospital, hoping that he would have time to save him from fatal poisoning. Meanwhile, a lady in a black coat, handing out chocolates to children on the street, was detained. She did not hide her identity. Olga Kranova, 36 years old. She has the second group of disability due to mental illness. Recognized by the commission as not dangerous to society. Olga became ill two years ago when her daughter, a first grader, drowned in the river. The mother's sanity could not withstand the grief. She began to consider all the children her own, gave them candy, invited them to her house for dinner, and was very upset when no one came. After the death of her daughter, Olga partially lost touch with reality. She could not survive the tragedy. Because of this, Krenova's husband filed for divorce. On the same day the detectives brought to the department, there also invited Gallus' mother and kindergarten teacher for identification. Irina and Elena looked into the features of Olga's face. The dead girl's mother could not say with certainty that it was this woman who came to their house. Elena also confirmed, with great doubt, that Olga had taken little Galia. At that time, Krenova's apartment was being searched. The policemen were looking for traces of poison. But alas, nothing was found. The woman had chocolates at home, ordinary, nothing poisoned. It turned out that Olga really, because of the longing for her daughter gave out sweets to all the children, but she was not guilty of anything. Parallel to these events, experts studied samples of poisonous substance found near Galia in the basement on half a candy. What kind of poison was it? Was it easy to obtain? Could it be obtained at home? The results of the investigation were extremely unexpected. The poisoning substance turned out to be a nerve poison, which is used for military purposes. How did the secret substance get into the hands of the unknown woman in black? Is she connected to the military labs? Or was she blindly carrying out an assignment? And most importantly, why was the little girl poisoned? There were many questions and no answers. Who did Gala's parents work for? Did they have anything to do with Soviet intelligence or state secrets? These versions at least traced the logic of what happened. But this version crumbled into dust. The head of the family, Sergei Pokrovsky, an engineer, was writing a PhD in mining. Gala's mother worked as an accountant. The family was well-to-do by Soviet standards, but without excess. According to neighbors, the Pokrovskys lived amicably, they had not heard any swearing or domestic scandals. The investigators took up for the acquaintances of the family of Little Gali. And then the case took a new turn. Imagine, an ordinary Soviet five-story house in the mid-sixties, on each floor on several apartments. In the basement of such a house and Argalia Pokrovskaya. Residents of all the houses in the neighborhood checked, 
but the detectives found nothing. No clue. And the idea that the killer lived somewhere here, did not give rest Detective Sukhov. The operative came to the yard to have a look around. He sat down on a bench, hoping to talk to one of the local gossips. At that moment his attention was attracted by children, they were playing in the hospital. The girl could not open the bottle with the supposedly mixture. And she boldly went to the operative. Uncle, open it, please. Sukhov smiled at her and opened the tight lid with one movement of his hand. A familiar odor hit his nose he had heard it not long ago. He associated it with the dead Galia. A strange scent of hay and garlic. The policeman was holding a whole vial of poison in his hand. But where did a bunch of kids in the yard get it? Where did you get the medicine? Mommy. The little girl pointed to the nearest entrance. Sukhov hurriedly called colleagues at the address named. The doorbell rang, a minute later the mistress showed up. Seeing the bottle, the woman looked at the police with bewilderment. When she heard about the poison, she turned white and rushed to kiss her daughter. Having calmed down, the woman told the detectives a strange story. Nina Gerasimenko was returning from work and suddenly noticed a woman in a black coat sobbing in her yard. She had never seen her here before. While Nina pondered whether or not to approach the stranger, but she hurried away. A small shopping bag was left lying on the asphalt. Gerasimenko decided to look into it. There were candies and a bottle with an unknown liquid. Nina assumed that it was medicine. She wasn't used to taking other people's things, so she decided to take the bag to the lost and found, but she got caught up in housework and forgot. She could not think that with her own hands in the house brought a terrible poison, which her little daughter stole unnoticed from her mother to play with the kids in the yard. Nina made a pleasant impression, an attractive, calm woman. Nothing suspicious, but the sleuths decided to inspect the apartment anyway. The interior of the rooms and things clearly told the police that Nina lives clearly not on one modest salary. According to the description of witnesses detective knew that the woman who took Galia from kindergarten was dressed in a dress made of cheap fabric. Nina didn't have one. But her closet was full of expensive outfits, fur coats and coats. She dressed stylishly and expensively. She stood out from her housemates. Where did she get the money for all this? The neighbors said nothing bad about Nina. They felt sorry for her. Poor woman suddenly lost her husband three years ago. What do you mean, suddenly? The detectives pulled the hospital records. The autopsy showed no signs of chronic illness. No exact cause of death was determined. The man worked as a base manager. But family relations were frayed. Ivan looked at younger men, manipulated his wife. He'll divorce you, you'll have nothing left, no outfits and jewelry. You better not stop me from living the life I want. But it didn't work out the way he wanted to live. Ivan died suddenly, and Nina was left well-to-do. So maybe she poisoned her husband like a pesky rat? And she's had the poison in the vial since then. There's been no poison testing since his death, and it's been three years. Ivan's grave was opened and samples were taken for chemical analysis. The result of the study of Ivan Gerasimenko's remains did not please the sleuths, no poisonous substances were found. The widow was no longer under suspicion. And the vial with poisonous substance in her apartment really appeared by accident. Week after week went by with no result. The city was full of rumors, the Pokrovskys grieved for their only daughter, and the investigation did not move. And again the call at the Chelyabinsk police station. It was Irina Pokrovskaya. She was very agitated and begged me to come to her home. Her husband's life was in danger. At a personal meeting she said that as usual she returned from work and on the dining room table found a terrible note. 
from her husband. It's all my fault, sweetheart. Ill avenge Galachka. Goodbye forever. If you forgive me, put me next to my daughter. You're Sergei. He probably found out who the killer was. But from where? This frightened Irina could not explain. With a cursory examination it became clear that from the apartment missing Sergei's hunting rifle and the keys to the country house. The detectives went to the address named by Irina. When the policeman arrived at the house there was a loud pop, it was a gunshot. The detectives found Sergei lying unconscious in the yard, the gun was with him, and on the opposite, on the wall was a hole from the shot. It looked like the man had shot someone, but who? That remains to be seen. Pokrovsky was taken to the hospital, he never regained consciousness, it turned out that he had a massive heart attack. He regained consciousness, but the attending doctor strictly forbade to ask Sergei any questions, any excitement was contraindicated for him. The policemen were confused. It was obvious that Pokrovsky possessed the information they needed, but it was impossible to find out. They decided to go another way. The sleuths went to Sergei's workplace and in the course of questioning his colleagues examined his desk. A curious postcard was found among his work folders. The postcard showed the profile of a woman. The profile looked like a lover of stylish and expensive clothes Nina Gerasimenko. There was also a signature. Almost me. For you, so that you don't forget. Nina Gerasimenko's acting talent appeared in the school drama club. And she turned her own life into a play. To this day in the law enforcement agencies of Chelyabinsk legends about her detention. Several people came to the detention. Probably, Nina realized that sooner or later they would come for her. So she prepared herself. When the doorbell rang, she did not come out, the policeman broke the door down and saw Gerasimenko with a noose around her neck. As soon as the door opened, Nina slipped off the stool. Of course, they picked her up and removed the noose. She wasn't going to die, of course. She could play, she could be cunning, she could be flirtatious. She knew how to please men, but her husband did not appreciate her talents, looked at the side, openly cheated. Nina did not like it. Apparently, she poisoned him, but it wasn't proven. And during the toxicological study, experts never found anything. Later, acquaintances of the Gerasimenko family told how Nina fought in a seizure at the funeral of her own husband. Everyone believed her then. She met Sergei Pokrovsky through her work. The woman taught Sergei English for the candidate's minimum. A slight flirtation suddenly turned into a strong passion. Pokrovsky wrote letters to Nina, the detectives studied them thoroughly. Sergei could not understand what was happening to him. His wife Irina, a dear, beloved person. But why is so attracted to the world of this apathetic and flighty woman? And the mistress became more and more capricious. Demanded either the family or me. Pokrovsky thought about it and chose his wife and daughter. He decided not to destroy the family in the name of passion on the side. He could not imagine that Nina could not bear the offense. Gerasimenko considered Galia, Sergei's only daughter, an obstacle to his happy personal life. Sergei will not have a daughter, there will be no desire to keep the family. I see a goal, I don't see obstacles. That's Nina. Once she translated an article in a foreign magazine. From it Gerasimenko learned that the strongest military poisons in the Soviet Union recently began to be used for domestic purposes, to spray gardens from insects. They were sold freely available. At first, the criminal wanted to slip the poison to the girl in the Pokrovsky's apartment. That's why she came to their house as a doctor with a mask on her face. At the last moment Nina doubted the success of her terrible plan. Phone in the apartment is, will be bad Gail Irina immediately call an ambulance, 
the girl will be saved. So she instead of poison candy gave Galia ordinary caramel and hurried to leave. Nina realized that to finish what she started she needed to stay with Galia alone. And it turned out to be easy. She asked her sister for a black coat, she was too attracted by attention and needed to be less conspicuous. Galia had known Nina for a long time, her father Sergei had introduced her to her. There were several times when Sergei picked up his daughter from kindergarten together with his mistress. Moreover, Galia was repeatedly in Nina's apartment. The father after kindergarten took his daughter not home, but to his mistress. That is why, when Gerasimenko on that ill-fated day came to pick up Galia in kindergarten, the girl came out to her and agreed to leave with her. The trusting child happily followed the killer. They went away from the kindergarten and in one of the city yards Gerasimenko gave the child a candy. Galochka took a bite and wanted to throw it away. The candy suddenly turned out to be very bitter. But Nina forcibly put the rest of the candy in the child's mouth. Then she sharply accelerated her step and left Galia in the middle of someone else's yard. The girl tried to catch up with her, but nothing worked. She suddenly became unwell. And Nina suddenly became scared, she decided to go back. She grabbed Galia and carried her to the open cellar. That's where the poison took effect. Sergei Pokrovsky realized the terrible truth not immediately. But when the mistress instead of sympathy suddenly sent him her portrait, guessed that it was she who committed the crime. The man did not dare to have an honest conversation with his wife, and the problem with the impunity of the former mistress wanted to solve himself. With a hunting rifle. To live with such a moral burden was unbearable for him, because after settling accounts with Nina planned to go to his daughter. Sergei asked Nina to come to his country house. When she, beautiful and calm, approached the house, he raised his gun. Closing his eyes, he fired. And fell to the ground with a heart attack before he even realized that he had missed. Gerasimenko escaped and continued to play her act. But the deception was still uncovered. Sergei Pokrovsky did not come to the trial of his former mistress. He did not want to watch the last benefit of the former mistress. And there was a lot to see. She asked the court to give her capital punishment, the death penalty. But it was an act, not sincere remorse. Nina knew that women are not shot in the Soviet Union. So she asked for execution without fear. But at the last word, the state prosecutor asked the court to make an exception and sentence Gerasimenko to death. For the first time in her life, the smug mask slid off her face. From fear, the glossy woman was turning into a grey-haired old woman before everyone's eyes. Nina did a full sit-down in the hours after the trial. But fair punishment did not happen. The Soviet court did not make an exception. She was given only twelve years. Having served her time, she returned to Chelyabinsk. She could not get a job at her old job and went to work as a simple letter carrier. Nina thought that the years passed and her crime was forgotten. But no. People had not forgotten and people were waiting for her return. Every time she knocked on a house with a letter or to receive a pension, she received a spit in the face and outright condemnation. Gerasimenko could not stand it, she left Chelyabinsk and nothing is known about Nina's fate. As there is no information about the life of her daughter. Disappeared from the city forever and Gala's parents, Sergei and Irina Pokrovsky. Surprisingly, but Irina forgave Sergei's treason. They say she even promised her husband to give birth to another daughter. How do you like today's story? Do not forget to like and subscribe, there are a lot of interesting things ahead.